I'm Justin Davis, and this is Drone Camps RC. <laughs> What's up guys welcome back to my drone camps channel today we're going to do a full review of the firefly 2 from hawkeye you guys remember the original hawkeye firefly that came out it kind of rocked the world in the micro brushless community because it was super super light and it was recording 1080p at 30 frames per second which was great because it is a step up above what's on board for your DVR FPV footage coming from your camera unless you're sporting something like a Cadex Turtle V2. But we're going to strap both of these cameras on the Bushido today and we're going to do a test on 1080p and we're going to test out the 2.5K at 30 frames per second that the Firefly 2 presents as well. So it's a really nice day out of the field so let's go ahead and get started with a little bit of footage from the Firefly 2 first. All right guys, welcome back from the flight test. What did you think about the new Firefly 2 versus the original Firefly? You know, the original Firefly for its time when it came out, it was really good. Uh, mainly for most people because it was only about, I don't know, around $20. And versus the Firefly 2 and upwards of $50, um, I think it's a still a pretty good value. It It is just a little bit honestly better than your DVR what your quad is shooting. Um, and for micro brushless under the sub 100 millimeter category, this was kind of a game changer for a lot of people. And some guys were actually putting this on five inch race quads, which is 
acceptable uh, for just barely upgrading your DVR. But you know, if it's if price is not a big deal, moving up, spending another twenty five dollars to get to Firefly Two, I honestly think that it it has probably worth the extra twenty five dollars. Um, even if you had to save up the extra twenty five dollars to get Firefly Two, the results of the two point five K. I think are the clear winner in my video uh, between both of these. The original Firefly was a great start. The only thing that I was surprised with with the Firefly 2, and you can't tell this on the Banggood website, is the size of it. Uh, it is a quite a bit heavier and larger than the original Firefly here, but putting these both on the scale, you'll see that coming up. The nice thing about the new one is that it has a much nicer lens. I do find myself cleaning off the lens cover quite a bit with my shirt so make sure you have something to clean the lens off with uh, that lens protector gets really dusty really fast um, it is nice that they give you quite a bit of accessories with the new Firefly 2 as well because uh, for around $50 you expect a little bit more in the bundle and they do give you that soft case that goes around the whole thing. This is supposed to waterproof it, but uh, honestly, it actually helps with dampening and vibration mostly because without the rubber case around the original Firefly with it just kind of zip tied with a little bit of uh, foam underneath it or riding in this, you still see quite a bit of jello in that Firefly footage compared to the Firefly 2. So uh, this one is flying quite a bit smoother with a lot less jello and testing it today on the Bushido, that was a big test because you can really see a lot of jello on these smaller prop guard style whoops, uh, the brushless whoops. So, um, yeah, and, and I'm impressed that the Bushido could actually carry the Firefly too and still get three minute flight time. So, I'm really happy about that. But I think the value, again, is pretty good. You do get a new style hard mount, and it's about a 30 degree tilt here. You've got a little spot on the bottom for any GoPro type of accessory if you want to put it on like a tripod or a selfie stick you can do that with this but I'm not sure why you would do that with this much tilt you kind of have to tilt it forward to get it level but this is a lot more durable feeling than the original one it's also thicker it has a spot through here you can get a zip tie around it you have a nice flat spot on the bottom for adding any type of VHB so that you can stick it down to your quad and then you can run some straps some zip ties around it but you're going to be stuck with this type of tilt this 30 degree tilt is going to be what your camera angle is stuck at. And you can put it on there either way uh, without the rubber case around it or you can do it with. Uh, I would suggest putting this rubber case on and then actually adding a little tiny piece of foam underneath the camera before you strap it down. It's also cool that they do give you two different straps and honestly since this is a review I can tell you that one of these straps failed so I don't think they're the highest quality straps. You can see that this one started to fail right here and the other one is great that I do have a backup. So it's nice they gave me two in the box. I also think that the new design is smarter than the older one, obviously, because it is just a little bit larger format. It's gonna, f gonna fit on any quad, mostly uh, under, under, I would say, under 100 millimeters is gonna start to push it, but anything over 100 millimeter, if you're running 2.5 inch props, three inch prop, five inch prop quad, will handle the Firefly no problem. I do like the fact that they also have a spring-loaded SD card slot on this version versus the old one had sort of a, just a push-in slot with no way to keep your SD card in there. So if you crashed really hard, you might actually lose your SD card. And you could just slide out of that slot right there and that would be a big problem. The other thing is that the microphones on both of these cameras are pretty much useless. Um, and the motors sound really, really kind of tweaked out in the audio. It doesn't really sound good at all. So the microphone's a no-go on these both of these cameras. And also, they're still using that 8-pin port there for charging the battery and getting your video out to your monitor. You will have to use this port with your yellow RCA cable to be able to get your video out, to be able to use the little joystick that came along with it for the Firefly 2 to be able to get to your menus and change your settings also to get that pesky little logo off the bottom left of the screen uh, it's kind of annoying that they defaulted that to show up in your video so it looks exactly like some of the run cam and the fox here joysticks so it's going to be pretty easy to use uh, just up down enter the menus um, and left and right there so pretty 
pretty standard hookups and it does hook up on the very side of the camera right here. Just a little two pin connector right there, it plugs in and you can access your menus once you have some type of video display set up for it. So I'm just gonna turn on the scale real quick and let me go ahead and put the Firefly 2 on there first. It's on right now, but that's okay. So 34.2 grams versus the original Firefly. And this is a big difference in video quality between these two. 15.9 grams. The Firefly is lighter. Uh, also, you can check out the Mobula. I believe the Mobulus Mini is also a competitor to this particular camera and might handle the lights and darks better. So this one is twice as heavy as the original Firefly, but in my opinion, obviously twice the video quality. But the buttons, the control functions on here pretty much work the same way as the older ones do. Uh, you're gonna long press on the power button like this and it's gonna turn on. You will see these LEDs on the bottom left right there light up and you see that they're in red right now. It takes a second to activate. Also, if you're holding it on its side like this, it's gonna start recording on its side and it's gonna throw that logo on a vertical and it's gonna look really weird. So um, if you want your video to be correct, when you turn it on, make sure that you have it flat like this on the correct side of the camera. Uh, otherwise it will rotate the video and you'll have some messed up video. The other thing is that this does do three minute intervals. So it's gonna start and stop a new file every three minutes. Now, if you look just below that M, that's the modes button on the left right there. You see those two red LEDs inside there? That's saying that it is on 2.5K resolution. If I press the mode button, if you press and hold it, let's see if it changes. Okay, there we go. Now we're in 1080p mode. If I press it again, you should hear it beep. And now I'm in photo mode. So there's three modes on here. There is photo mode, 1080p at 60 frames per second. And you can even change the frame rate if you use the little joystick that came along with it. But I feel like the operation of this is fairly simple. It takes a moment to change the modes, but it's still a little bit finicky to use just like the older style camera. So I wish these buttons were just a little bit easier to use um, than they really are. They really are something that you're gonna have to get used to to be able to learn how to use the Firefly 2 because sometimes you go up and do a flight you think you're recording and you really wasn't. So I think what they have here for the price is actually pretty decent. I, I do like that they include two straps. They include the new interface joystick menu and you can access. The only thing I'm not super stoked on is that I, I kind of wish it had Bluetooth or something like that and an app so we could go into our phone and do it that way. Maybe in future version of this, they'll do some type of Bluetooth, which would be nice. Uh, that would eliminate the need to actually use the joystick altogether. We could just do it inside an app. But then again, they're also trying to keep the price down. So uh, adding more Bluetooth is also gonna drain your battery faster. So keeping Bluetooth off there is just gonna make that little tiny, tiny 600 milliamp battery lasts a little bit longer for you and respectively i was getting around uh, i'd say 45 minutes of recording time i think you could get the full hour if you decided to record in 1080p at like 30 frames per second um, and it does take two hours to charge this baby up to take it out to the field uh, for just under an hour's worth of use so for one session this is totally fine and it, if you fly any longer than probably half a day this is definitely going to die on you during that day. But for your first few flights during the day, if you want to get some nice 2.5K video in a super small format, this is the one to get. Um, I would much rather spend my money on this one versus the original Firefly. So this one is kind of uh, putting the old one in the past unless you want something that is just going to be a little better resolution. You're going to have to save up that extra $25 to get it. But uh, I think most people will probably spend the extra $25 to get the Firefly 2. In my choice, that's the one to get. So I'm gonna rate this one about 4.5 stars out of five, taking off half a point for uh, maybe a, a finicky button menu and mode accessibility. And uh, the little joystick, I'm not such a big fan of uh, having to hook up that external video to access all those menus. Uh, I just wanna keep it as simple as possible when I'm out of the field and uh, be able to push record and go fly. But thanks again for watching my reviews, guys. This has been an honest review of the Firefly 2. I'm Justin Davis. Take care, guys. I'm on the road. I'll see you on the next one.